The shots with Amazing on the side of Team Solo Mint. That's Freddy's job. Team Captain over on the side of SK Gaming. And something we'll have to note for Team Solo Mint throughout the entire tournament is a Nidalee ban that's yeah. going to have to go down. Well, they banned Nidalee in 14 of their 14 NALCS playoff games. And they're not going to be picking it up for Worlds. I oh. think that's pretty clear. That is just a ban used every single game. A definite weakness in TSM's overall strategy they're going to have to overcome. Oh. Yeah, and it's an absolutely needed one because Freddy would quite happily pick that up. <laughs> Kale also banned out, and that, you may be thinking it's towards Jezus or Freddy, but no, it could well be N-Rated. He's played his support three times throughout the season. Zed, of course, yeah. focus towards Bjergs, and the big one for me, though, is is Syndra going to be banned? SK have let this one through before, despite the fact in Europe they know the champions in that mid lane, big players like Frog and like Peke can play it well, just like Bjergsen can, but they're happy to go up against it. Aatrox for targeted towards Freddy. That's going to put Freddy uncomfortable, and there is the Syndra ban. Definite target banning. However, uh, I think the big reason they banned Cinder there is they would have loved to ban Alistair or Maokai, but if you're not going to be able to control them, you just have to be able to trade them back and forth. Thyra's picking Alistair, I expect Maokai to come back on the other side. Ooh, awesome pickups to start. The cow does get through in game two. As we go through the goof stages, Freddy and Gilius now to pick up. Eyes on Gilius as well. Consider him to be an impact here to come in for the team if he can continuously play as Sense Garen did. Like they said, a little bit of counter jungling, but will he fall into that style? It's a fair bit of pressure. He was just in a pretty pressure packed situation, actually, on Unicorns of Love. He qualified yeah. for the LCS. He ends up picking Kha'Zix, which is something Sven Skarin actually was 6-1 and one on the playoffs with, so he's really just trying to fill his shoes, not change anything strategically for SK. They didn't rely on jungle shot calling to begin with. Most of their shot calling comes from Freddy 1-2-2 in the top lane, so maybe they can just pull off their normal strategies here. It does, of course, mean that Lee Sin has snuck through. 17 bans against them, amazing, in that mid lane. Of course, back in the Copenhagen Wolves in Europe Spring, he was one of those top champions as well. So he's managed to rock this champion throughout yeah. the entire season, be it in Europe or North America. And against the European team, it should work well for him. Alongside him, of course, Nami picked up a Lost Boy, someone that's come in for TSM and absolutely done incredible things. Yeah, no surprises on TSM side, just picking the big time champions. A surprise on the SK Whoa, side, yeah. though. Yeah. Locking down the zone, a very nice coming in for N Rated. They said he's got to make his, make his champion pool bigger. All right, so we've seen a little bit of Sona play. It's been patchy throughout. Uh, some Chinese teams are actually playing it. LGD Gaming. Obviously, N Rated is also a type of person who used to rely on Sona occasionally. It is the new Sona updated. If they're able to group up and if TSM doesn't have a lot of AoE, it's a little better. However, they're playing it against Alistair, Nami, and then whatever else TSM decides to throw at them. It is a vulnerable pick in the laning phase, a squishy champion. But if Sona does get ahead, I very much respect her power. I'm surprised. I'm not that surprised to see her at Worlds. I am surprised to see Mundo picked up instead of Maokai in that. So that's something yeah. that has switched across for Freddy. Going to see how that works out. Of course, Ari's still on the table, but we're going to wait to see whether these Yasuo does get locked in for Bjergsen. And of course, while Turtle on Tristan, no surprises. That team synergizes amazingly if they lock it in. Everybody can prep Bjergsen for the knockup of Last Breath, and it is locked in. A lot of top tier picks coming from Team Solo Mid. One thing the TSM likes to do Ooh. frequently, instead of counter picking matchups, is to pick entire team comps. And this is very similar to the Yasuo compositions they ran throughout the regular season when they would go for Yasuo. The only difference is they would run Lulu in the top lane, but they have a monster in there with the cow as well. So every single person on that team can contribute to Yasuo's ultimate, giving Bjergsen every single option he wants as far as which target to go for, and really trying to set him up to carry. Going back to that Mondo, these only been once Freddy had played that the entire summer. So it's definitely a turnaround, and we wondered that with the bands coming in, the nearly the Aatrox targeted towards him. Has that put Freddy in an uncomfortable position? Dyrus up against him. We'll see how it works out for him. It's true. One of the big stories that we need to follow here is whether or not Dyrus can neutralize Freddy and kind of take him off of his game. As a shot calling top laner, if you're struggling in your own lane, you're not going to be able to make very many good initiation plays. Also, Mundo himself isn't a very good initiator, it will be kind of difficult for SK to find the right type of plays throughout the map. Well, with the match about to get underway, we'd like to turn our attention to Twitter. Tell us who you think will score first.
blood. Use the hashtags TSMWIN or hashtag SKWIN. And of course, we'll send your tweets to Anatol Esports. We'll check them out as we get the game underway. Here are the teams, here are the champions. What do we think here? Well, well a little bit of sustain in the bot lane yeah. is the one thing that I think. Not necessarily a huge lead here for Trisnami. If they can land a few big time bubbles, it will be very interesting to see whether Enrieta can stay alive. I think that bottom lane is potentially the weak point. Potentially the weak point of TSM. Wild Turtle has struggled massively in laning phase near the end of the North American season, and he needs to pick it up for Worlds. And here we are, game two. Coming out of group B for this one. TSM versus SK Gaming. As we said, Gilius stepping in for Svens Garen throughout this. And we are gonna see the game underway. Well, one thing I never thought I'd hear in Taipei. There you go. Is the TSM champ. Clearly the home favorites. <laughs> here, <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> here yeah. in Taiwan, who knows? Coming way out right it. away. So one thing that's that's always intrigued me about SK is they're the team that is all right with taking breaks, but they'll come back a little weaker than they usually do, and even did so coming into Worlds, but it's kind of a yeah. stop the burnout factor for them. It's one of those teams, we talk about their sports psychologists frequently, but during right, right. the summer split, when they were slumping, when they came out of the slump, Candy Panda was very upfront about it. He said, we slumped because we were slacking off. We weren't practicing as much because we didn't want to burn out before the end of the season. They started grinding near the end of the season. They made it back into the playoffs. They gave Alliance a great run in the semifinals. Many people think SK was actually the second best team in Europe after playoffs. Of course, all of that changes with the Gilius substitution in the jungle right now but it definitely has to be noted. Maybe they're going to be more fresh than other teams. Yeah, and the Gilead substitution is obviously a, a big, big point in this one. But you would say, despite the fact he's you know a fresh-faced kid he coming into this one, thrown into the World Championships, completely wouldn't have expected that. He was a challenger team not too long ago. He has performed brilliantly on Unicorns of Love. You cannot deny it. However, it is a very different team. That's all about supporting Power of Evil in the mid lane. Can he do yeah. the same with Jezus? Jezus is a completely different player to Power of Evil. Power of Evil will carry games and Gilius will support him. And I gotta wonder, with Freddy being the shot caller, whether he's just gonna pull him towards that top lane or maybe down the bottom. Well, you usually get the regular lane of Jezus kind of farming, being by himself. He didn't get a lot of attention from Sets Garen either. Yeah, hopefully for SK, they have enough confidence to let him make his own decisions. Because as soon as you start bossing a jungler around, you completely neutralize them as a player. So down the bottom, immediate aggression. Will we see some level two plays from either of these teams? TSM playing it cautiously. Back towards the tower, Candy Panda shoving the wave in alongside n -rated. It's been a long time since we saw Sona down in this bottom lane. I'm ready for it. <laughs> I was watching a whole bunch of LGD games and their support would often pair it with Graves and they had a lot of success Whoa. in the laning phase. The damage output, when they get both people in that new Q snuggle zone, they can get a whole bunch of damage when they decide to go for a trade. Giving out all the hugs to start off the game. Looks like pretty on par for both junglers here as they start. We even may get treatment for the bottom lane from both if they decide to go straight there. A lot of pressure in this game. We talk about pressure for Dyrus and being able to perform here. Did quite well in the playoffs for Team Solo Mid. Also talk about Jezz, who's talked about his confidence kind of being shaken. Mm -hmm. and he's quoted himself as that. I have to really wonder what's going to happen in this mid lane. Bjergsen is just so good in the mid lane. And yeah. obviously, Jezz is not the most hyped mid laner. He just kind of has to get by. He's usually pretty consistent as well. Uh -oh. This is a tough one, though. Yeah, looks like Bjergsen's trying to set him up here, trying to force him off to the left hand side. Amazing, ready and waiting to go, but. Doesn't look like he's taking the bait right now. Jez is going pretty deep on get this the one. Up. He's in trouble. Can they get him down? Manages to dodge the Sonic Wave. Ignite was also used. Heal flash by Jez. Some of the spells burnt on both sides, but Jez is safe for now. Got to yeah. say, oh, my boy's very impressed when a early level three Yasuo can get off that attack. You, you already have the wall or the Q up. They know it's coming. Yes. Jez has had to blow the flash. Really nice move there by Bjergsen. Obviously fairly aggressive. If Gillies would have been there for a counter gank, it would have been rather dangerous. Amazing also burned his flash. So at the end of the day, it is a two for two summoner trade. Not actually that great of a thing for TSM. Bottom lane still quite back and forth. More pressure yeah. in the mid lane. Jez is going to get a bit of attention from Gilius. So it's going to be different for them, but he is still going to play it safe and not show that Gilius is there. Good control by them. This is tricky, I feel. Bjergsen well aware of the fact that if 
Jezus is being that aggressive, that far up the lane. He knows there is Gilius waiting in the wings just off the side there. He calls in the reinforcements. Amazing waiting there. Doesn't look like we're going to see some play, but Jezus may well get caught out again here. Pulse defensive ball will get knocked up. Here they go. Sonic Wave does catch this time around. First blood is coming. It's amazing that gets it for TSM. That mid lane jungle synergy brought all the way over from Europe. Definitely starting to work out even more for TSM. Every single game, they seem to get better. Bjergsen now level five and should punish Jesses with no summoners. And it's great. History repeats uh -oh. itself for TSM. Ooh, top lane Dyrus getting a little roughed up there by Freddy. I talked to a lot of people about Alistair in the top lane. And I was actually one person that was of the opinion that you can manage him, especially with a Mundo. If you can somehow sustain through him. Doran shields Freddy with a lot of health regen as well. You remove his ability to out-harass you with headbutt, and then you start turning around with more damage in teamfights. It definitely feels like Freddy is ready for this one. That's why they didn't pick Maokai, because they wanted that matchup. And one thing that always catches you out as a player is, of course, the fact that Alistair, without the ultimate, is squishy in all yep. things. You think you're his big, giant tank. Without items, you can be handled. Freddy returns, teleport used by both top laners to come back in there, and they immediately go straight back at it, <laughs> going straight in with that headbutt. Freddy almost certainly has health regen roots in that top lane. Currently with the Giant's Belt, he's at 49 health regen per five seconds. He's really going to be able to withstand that Dyrus headbutt, and it's basically a neutralized farm lane. There is no bully potential from Dyrus in that lane anymore. Amazing, looks like he wants to get Freddy a little bit of aggression here in the top lane. Jezus trying to keep himself safe there, and it looks like Freddy's gonna have a little uh -oh. bit of trouble. Amazing, slowly waiting yeah. on the outside. Gilius nowhere near They're this trying one. to go before Freddy has his ultimate, but he's still pretty tanky. Is he gonna be tanky enough? Flashes out, Sonic Wave catches on, but he can just walk away from this one, as you mentioned, with that giant belt on him. Yeah. It's no problem for him. One thing that has happened, though, Jezus forced back to lane early on there. Had to go and respect it. Goes for the cloth armor. Fantastic pickup there by Freddy. Almost nullifies the fact that you can dive that Mundo before six and get him down. I like it a lot. Down back down to the bottom lane. Candy Panda is really using a lot of that mana to get himself in range as Wild Turtle and Muskway continue the harass from this lane that has come so far this season for Team Solo Mid. Both are very close to level six right now. You can see the sizing each other up, seeing who can land it. Will it be the wave? Will it be the crescendo that starts things off? Of course, Dragon could easily follow. This is the right time. The junglers are up in the top half of the jungle, so it's both really a straight-up duel between these two. And Radio taking some damage. It's TSM that are, you would feel are in the stronger position right now, but that crescendo in the right point can be critical. Yeah. They still have Wild Turtle on Trist. If they can get him out of the laning phase unscathed, yeah. it's a huge boom for TSM. Even Ooh. when he was getting beaten in laning phase, he was still having good team fights with Trist, and they're going even actually down bottom. Gilius back to the mid lane, just for a cross, making sure Amazing isn't trying to make a return pass, but it looks like TSM is happy with that first kill they got here. It's gonna definitely give them a spike if they go for that first fight, but they're going to have to be careful. It is a great fight team comp from SK. More pressure to the bottom lane here. No shots on either turret yet, but you can just see how dominant Wild Turtle is on that Tristana. Tricky, tricky stuff in this bottom lane. Level six, imminent between the two junglers are down in the lower half of the jungle, and Dyrus, he is on a this is, the, this is the Alistair dive. He can't do anything to Freddy, so why not go mid for Jesses? Right into the wall, we'll stop him up for a little bit longer. The synergy comes in from the Mad Pow. Jess is ignited, Jess is down. The only way Jess lives through that is if he flashes while Dyrus is trying to headbutt him. He does not, he gets displaced. Bjergsen alts on top, it is a systematic well executed gank by TSM. And the blue also being stolen away by Amazing. He took his own, now he's gonna take theirs. And that's a big problem for Jezus. He needed to get hold of that. He needs to try to keep up with Bjergs. And you can see the CS difference is starting to become huge between them. And he knew that coming into this game that Bjergsen versus Jezus was going to be a critical point. And now we're gonna get a 3v2 dive on yeah. bottom. It's in a ward though. Gilius will try and counter gank this one, but Amazing goes it. Oh, not quite gonna land it. Candy Panda, Gilius tries to react. Comes across, catches the crescendo oh, and Amazing, and man. that is the first kill for SK. That was right on the point, the edge of the crescendo, but N-Rated landed it. What a spectacular shot right there by N-Rated. Doesn't even have to burn flash. Definitely well practiced on Sona. That's exactly what SK needed to just stay survived in this game. Gilius has 
been completely outmatched by Amazing up until that point where the ward of the bottom lane and the crescendo of the bottom lane is able to help him out against the enemy jungler. Another giant spout coming in for Freddy here. Looks like he's got to keep his pants up a little bit more. This lane <laughs> definitely going to be a long fight lane if it goes down to it. We see the Triforce already coming out here for Dyrus. Things are getting crazy up there. Yeah, and I wonder if that amazing play would have pulled off. That would have been a dragon for TSM, I feel. But it's definitely put stops on that one. It's delayed it for a while. We talked about SK's weak laning phase. It is very much showing right here. Mm -hmm. The mid lane, of course, big, strong, dominant force. Wild Turtle on Tristana. If he can get going on that ahead of Lucian, it is a win in lane phase regardless. The top lane, big difference in farm, but Cyrus yeah. has already roamed. He's already got himself assist. Everything TSM has used has been towards Bjergsen, and that's really their power point right now. He's got a two-level advantage onto Jess's. I suppose SK is trying to come back by just building multiples of the same items, double giant spells, triple <laughs> longsword at this point. They're still in a little bit of trouble, though, because Bjergsen is very powerful. Could be difficult. However, if Amazing continues to make aggressive plays, it will give them small windows to come back. Will he check the brush? Possibly not, but another ward goes down. At, they're they're pre-warding these to make sure they have consistent vision throughout the jungle. Ilias spotted out by that ward of TSM. There's the culling being used. Wild Turtle healed straight up by Lost Boy. Mm. No problems there. Double buff still on Candy Panda, remember, from that earlier gank by Amazing. That's about to wear off. Ilias, a little bit of counter jungling here, but Amazing. He's creeping around the back of Jezzas, but he's spotted. Jesus if this turns away. into a 2v2 of any kind, TSM would come out on top, which is why Jesses has to run away. However, oh. Gilius gets a little bit caught. Wards everywhere, and they're going to be able to give some protection to Gilius. He's forced to flash over the wall. Tough game for him. He is getting warded out everywhere. It's going to be a tough series. He just got thrown into the World Championship, mm -hmm. obviously, and he is struggling a little bit here. Even the wards they're placing on the top side that aren't seeing Gilius are, is alerting TSM of where he is on the map. If he hasn't crossed the top side, then he's in the bottom. Let's make a gank here. They're using everything to their advantage, and every lane seems to have a good one of that. Bjergsen is completely honed in right now as well. And because Amazing is just setting up camp right there, there's nothing SK can really do to come back here unless, unless Bjergsen makes a mistake. He's completely landing all the skill shots, keeping the pressure up, and the ward coverage is immaculate around where he is right now. Yeah, completely manhandled. There is a ward spotting this one. They know that this dragon is going down. I don't think they're going to do anything about it other than get a timer. You see SK sneaking in, but immediately the call's been given back away. You're never going to get close to this one. Gilius was not there. So first dragon, big objective for TSM. Gives them a fairly substantial goal yeah. lead just 12 minutes into this game. They're playing very well very controlled, and it's kind of the way TSM always wants to play. They focus around Bjergsen so he can be a playmaker late game. And Ooh. the biggest thing here is their bottom lane is actually winning. A lot of praises sung towards Team Solo Mid as they were boot camping a bit. Lost Boy having great play throughout all that, that practice. And TSM has definitely changed a few things about their gameplay. Getting that aggressive early start, and it's really paying off. 13 minutes on to this one. Not much pressure from Gilius in this bottom lane, and Candy Panda and N-Rated have been at that turret the majority of the time. Chez has absolutely struggled in this mid lane, still yet to get his hands yep. on the blue buff. Mm -hmm. Nearly 30 CS behind on Bjergsen, absolutely has been the focus, and why not? It's, it's well known that he is the weak point of SK Gaming in that mid lane, completely leaving the top lane alone. Dyrus and Freddy have been on yeah. the island, untouched, and you know, it's a gigantic tank versus a gigantic tank, so no surprises. And we can see the overall goal lead here being about two points 5,000, mm -hmm. uh, 1,200 of that is in the mid lane. So it is just wow. them absolutely picking on Jess's right now. And I think they're just going to continue this. There's nothing drastic that TSM needs to do. They need to continue to set up some ganks, obviously on Jess's. If they push him back far enough, then Bjergsen can begin roaming. But they're really just trying to work from the mid lane outwards towards the rest of the map. And Jess's is so piecing together his build. His spike will be so far away trying to get a few items in there, and then Bjergsen coming out so strong already has to put in that Seeker's Arm guard. TSM once again towards the blue, Gilius able to figure it out. Looks like they get away nice and clean. This could well be the first claps we see. And the first big team fight, honestly, this blue buff. Mm -hmm. Is it worth fighting over TSM? Little unsure on this one. They're buying time instead for the mid lane. They are going to give this one up. That means, oh, are they? Amazing <laughs> tries to land it sneakily at the end there. Trying to force a smite, I think, from Gilius. They did use it. Jezus gets the blue, though. 
Yeah, that was pretty much it. There's still a lot of pressure lost there by SK just to secure their blue buff. One thing I will say is even though SK is not buying a whole bunch of wards, they got pretty good value in the wards they are actually buying. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, indeed. Everybody swarming the top lane here. Freddy They're using his a lot ultimate of early on this one, so it's going to be wearing off. Flash is it. They're getting what they want. <laughs> Blocking the business there as he gets out. Nice time in the mid lane though. We'll see whether they can push out or whether they're gonna get punished for it. That's the question. Crescendo on the wild turtle. He's gonna get locked up and is it enough? Great disengage from Lost Boy. The wave, the aqua prison, everything lands. And TSM just walk away. Pretty sweet move there by N-Rated using Crescendo from the Fog of War though. Definitely catching Wild Turtle a little bit out of position, but they're able to get out thanks to the fantastic play from Lost Boy. As we said. Getting those praises sung, and he's showing it here on the stage as well, keeping consistent play up. That gold lead isn't getting much farther away, so SK has been able to stave off the advantage TSM has now, but Amazing is getting everything. Bjergsen's not needing blue buffs, he is getting big. Level 10 to Gilius is 9, still getting warded out in his jungle. TSM on a good path right now. One thing that has actually worked well for Jez is the fact that he's built into this. You just saw there, while he did get it, a little bit of damage on him from Bjergsen, it didn't do as much this time. He's got them Seeker's Arms Guard. It has delayed his build. You can see he hasn't got that Athenes yet, but he's built correctly. Hasn't managed to stick to his path built against what he needs. And it is going to be a simple game of delaying for SK Gaming, honestly. They need to get a lot of items on Jezus, but the fact is Bjergsen is going to have those two critical items before he gets there. And I feel like Freddy is just hoping he has enough armor to withstand a late game Wild Turtle. As far as TSM goes, especially with the Trinity Force Alistair, they are a full attack damage team. So armor stacking actually will work very well against them if they can get to reasonable levels of gold difference. At the moment, TSM is still outpacing them a little too quickly, but if this was an even gold game late and SK itemized appropriately with a lot of armor, they would actually have an item edge in that sense because their defensive items would be much more efficient. Such a spike Ooh. right now coming in for Team Solo. Uh -oh. And Gilius gets hit up. That's just the shiv and the wow. Q. A little bit of pain being delivered there. That can also come from Wild Turtle. These guys far and ahead on items, a minute on Dragon, and they're going to look to pressure that quite nicely. Forced to back off. Gilius heads back to the jungle. Looks like he's cleaning up what he can. Still warded out on the top side. They are not making it easy for the newcomer. I can't tell whether that was good to reaction from Gilius to not flash there mm. or simple shock. <laughs> he was just like, I've just lost half my hit points, guys. I, I don't know what happened. He had Oriana right behind him, so yeah, obviously Bjergsen was just being a little bit safe. It was still real scary, though. Sightstone on, on Lee Sin very early as well. Uh, Lizard Elder, for a second I thought it was a Sightstone Kha'Zix. But no, that's just a normal build for me. Gilius can't get next to a brush without getting uh -oh. hit. Jess is Bjergsen getting his own ultimate in. Oh, the Sonic Wave doesn't quite hit, but the Safeguard comes in. Whoa. He cleans it up with the last Q. What a slick move there by TSM. I thought they were leaving him a little bit extra alive, knowing he'd still have a Shockwave to suck him back in. Amazing, making it out just in the nick of time, barely taking any damage. Oh, Crescendo does not land this time around, and that's the Aqua Prison followed by the bubble. Brilliant play, oh. but then Rainy gets away. Wild Turtle not going to get turned around. Candy Panda wants the pursuit, but Amazing's coming in around the side. Can he oh, get no. back up towards him? Comes around the backside and Rainy. Sonic Wave doesn't land. No reactions. Bjergsen oh. comes in. Dyrus teleports in. They TSM, are so dead. five man. Pylon in the bottom, SK Gaming in all sorts of trouble. Freddy comes down to join the party, but he's simply just another death for TSM. That's a double for Wild Turtle. Three for zero. Fantastic play by TSM. Sometimes when you're under a turret, you just have to give up. <laughs> At that point, the teleport yeah. was completely wasted. TSM had a monstrous uh -oh. advantage. There was no escape, and SK just makes matters worse. Wow! Gilius going down. Jess is in the wrong place at the wrong time, and the cow comes in to give him the what for. Picking and up the dragon. dragon. This train is rolling down the tracks way too quick for SK. Something about TSM games. They play slow, they say they play slow, and then they explode. Seemingly kills all around the map. Obviously, this one was a crazy, crazy fight. The shield surprising Wild Turtle last second, getting him low, but the collapse from TSM was just fantastic. Amazing gets in behind them. Almost the fact that he was missing these spells just made matters worse because it delayed the inevitable. Warding to allow Dyrus with the turret dive. Freddy 
really bad teleport right there. Did not even have his ultimate, just teleported into dive. A five-man dive with the damage reduction from an Alistair is easy pickings there for TSM. And honestly, I, I completely question why on earth they decided to engage Bjergsen back in that mid lane. When Gilius came back in, they already saw the damage he was doing. There's simply not enough ability power for Chesters to put that shield on and return the damage back to Bjergsen. Simple, easy double kill for him. And now, when a Yasuo is at 4 0 2, oh. you have big problems. And Bjergsen as well, giving the shot caller uh -oh, a lead in the game. Top lane indeed, trying to lock down once more onto Freddy. He should be all right on this one, backing off like said Jat, sometimes you gotta leave that turret. This turned into a stop <laughs> very quickly. 9,000 gold at 20 minutes. They took advantage of Gilius. That's, that's, not, a, they, they did. that's not a goalie to come back. They took advantage of everyone. This is true. On SK, it really feels like the bottom lane stood true. Freddy, uh, he was trying to pull a stalemate lane, mm. but he could not control Dyrus's roam. And every member of TSM has contributed no more, no one more than Bjergsen though. Good lord, Freddy in trouble, he's going down, Flash is out, but that's not going to be enough, he cannot survive the damage that Bjergsen has. And that's with a Randian Zome and Giant Spell and a Chain Vest, he still gets shredded. Dyrus turning on towards Candy Panda, 2v1, has he got the damage? I think Candy Panda must have gone deep on towards the tower to have this much damage. He's got that Triforce move speed, he's still going! There's so much that, that the other team can do with this, Dyrus is holding Candy Panda and Edward and hostage right now as TSM runs amok on the map. Oh, Gilius going down. What turtle finds himself a target. Dyrus bullies out two. Both Candy Panda and Edward. Middle lane is wide open. It's only Jezzles that's holding ground and Bjergsen fancies it. Maybe he's going to sniff for it. No, early Baron. Why not? Why not? Everything's going on for them. 10,000 gold lead. They built a Bloodthirster on Yasuo, which you've seen from a few players, actually. Yeah, yeah. I'll let the Analyst Desk cover that one, because I want them to talk about Bloodthirster on Yasuo. More lifesteal, a little bit of a shield, less solo potential, but this is just TSM turning scrim results into absolute domination. That's a really good way to put it. They're at the playoffs. Reginald said, play it like a scrim. Let's just see this one more time. Yeah. Gilius? What the hell was he thinking? You made a big mistake right there. <laughs> uh, Wild Turtle is really strong. Did he even evolve? That's just... Forcing yourself to make plays. That's a tilt plays. play. I mean, that's mm, a Kavix right. that has evolved his spikes and his leap. Trying to solo and isolate a target. Maybe if he maxed an evolved Q. Maybe then he could take down Wild Turtle. If not, he has no chance. And it's going to get harder and harder. Three static shifts across the board. Every lane is going to be pushing at max speed right now. And TSM is not going to be stopping. SK finally putting everything back into the middle. Freddy still loves to go for the 1-4, so he's going to try and stay, try and keep Dyrus at bay. But it's only going to be too long. It's not going to be too long before TSM is right in the base. Could we legitimately be seeing the first time TSM make it out of a group stage at Worlds? They are. <laughs> Looking strong here, Let's honestly. Not too far ahead. No doubt about it. Well, technically, you could argue they were in the quarterfinals in season two, but that's because right. they got a direct seed there. TSM, though, legitimately have come to this World Championships with the best chance they've ever had, and we're hearing yeah. absolutely great things about them from scrims. They have two games today as well. There's three different that's teams right. in their group. TPA, they will not play today. Starhorn Royal Club, they will. And they're yeah. going to have a lot of momentum after this one because they have put on a spectacular performance here. Just looking for more. They got three static shifts. They got a 13,000 gold lead. Make that 13,500. And there's no reason for them to stop here. It's going up. They're definitely going to need the Swiss bank soon on this one. Inhibitor turret's going to be going down. 24 minutes. We're coming up. Mind in the game. It could be SK going for broke here. They do uh, deter Team Solo mid just a little bit. And Freddy calls himself in. Here we go. Will the fight turtle gets hit up. Will they be able to keep it going? Everybody's jumping in and going for broke this time. Gilius gets hit, hit up. Thrown down in the box. And they go for Freddy towards the fountain. He's going to go down. They're aced in their base at 23 and a half minutes. Oh. And the surrender for game two at World Group stages comes in from SK. Team Solomon takes the game 15 to 1. What a way to start their journey towards the World Championship. Obviously, they're playing against a wounded SK Gaming that was yes. not together in this one. But they definitely knew how to finish that time. That is the fastest, most decisive game I have probably seen from TSM since they formed this roster for sure. And to do it on the world stage in their first game is spectacular. You got a thing. Bjergsen, we talked about him, is the pressure on him, the shot caller, the man of the moment for TSM. And 
by God did he perform on Yasuo this early on. From the very get-go, he looked like a man on a mission. I don't even know how to finish this one because the game got out of hand so quickly. We were like 14, 15 minutes in. They were SK was doing all right, you know. They were just hanging around thinking maybe Mundo can get to a point, and then it was over. I got to focus on the point that TSM adapted to that misplay so quickly. Amazing went in, and they didn't do it ever again. They didn't make a wrong call after that. They were in the game, and they were ready to just take the win. Knowing they had the advantage, TSM played as they usually do. Loco Doco coming around, the team says, the sixth player of the team, and he's been paying off for him. Yeah, absolutely fantastic.